Welcome to Huntington, Utah, home of a lot of coal mines and one very large and very stuck excavator. This is an absolute doozy of a recovery. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Guys, now that you've seen the situation, you've seen the mess, you've seen the logistics of what we're dealing with here, before we go any further, I want you to drop a comment below and guess how many hours and how many minutes you think this project's gonna take us. I'm talking like, I think we're gonna be done 12 hours and 35 minutes, 14 hours, 37 hours, drop in the comments below because we're starting a timer right now. And whoever gets the closest, the very, this is Price is Right, okay? The closest without going over, you, my friend, are gonna be taking home a giant swag pack. We will ship you like a very healthy package of gear. So uh, drop your guesses below and let's see what happens. And wish us luck because this is bad. My guess is days. Does that mean days? Say? I'm guessing we're out of here by the night. Guys, welcome to beautiful Huntington, Utah, home of a very large and very stuck excavator. Uh, we just barely rolled up. Excavator, as you can see, is buried over there. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a cool spot. This is about two hours south, uh, two and a half hours south of where our shop is. Um, we're kind of right here in the heart of central Utah, kind of near coal mining country. And uh, we've got a predicament here. Like I told you, uh, this, uh, this old excavator is buried. So we just rolled up. Uh, we're gonna kind of stage the equipment, figure out where we wanna park, put stuff, and uh, then uh, we'll sit down and go over a game plan, figure out what we gotta do. But plan of attack number one, put on a wild bill. You, White brim hat. You got yours? You look like, like a banker. Can't trust him <laughs> in that hat. Bank robber. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the man of the hour right here. Looks like we're gonna be pretty good friends, man. I think so. Based off of what I'm seeing, looks like we're a couple of kindred spirits. <laughs> Uh, she's buried. Never know when to quit. Never know when to quit. You don't quit. No. We're done. Just getting started. So, gonna get unloaded, get staged, get together, make a game plan. Tell people, uh, actually we'll probably have. I'm Brian Fox. I started digging a trench and digging out some Russian olive and just cleaning up some ditches. I got off the road just a little bit and it was all over after that. Every time you move, it just looks like a water bed. It sits there and ripples. Um, we've hooked a D7 to it the first day and that just pulled it in deeper. We had a buddy come over with his machine, his excavator, and we hooked buckets and it just pulled him into the hole. Um, we decided to let it sit. So how happy would you be today if we can get it out of there? Oh, I'll be stoked. <laughs> I got full confidence that Dave can get it out of there. So here we have Mr. Brian Fox and his beautiful family. Minus one, he's probably helping unload a tractor, he's fine. Um, Brian, you guys live nearby? Yeah, we live here. Live right here. And uh, just work on your property. Yep, we're clearing some Russian olive and got off the road and yeah. it was over after that. It's deceivingly wet from what I can see. Yeah. There's a lot of water in the ground right here, which I'm obviously... the only guy in the county that doesn't want water. <laughs> How'd that rainstorm treat you? <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, I'll bet. I pumped out thousands of gallons. Did you really? The past couple of weeks. You've got a big old excavator over there. That's a John Deere 450. Yep. That's like a hundred thousand pound machine. It's a hundred thousand plus. Plus. Uh, and it's been stuck for how long? At least 12 weeks. <laughs> I thought it was two months, but that's closer to what? That's three months. You've tried a lot of different things here. Yeah, I mostly just try to get something underneath it, but every time I do, it just sinks out of sight. Yeah. Everything I put under just keeps smashing in yeah. deeper. Any predictions on what, how, how, how this is going to go down? I got confidence in you guys. Good. Yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> You're going to get it out. Today, there we right? go. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> we kind of scheduled two days, kind of worst case scenario. We got optimistic guys that think we can get it done in one. 
I'm kind of on the fan. I think we'll have it out sooner or later. Tonight. Yeah, tonight. Come Here out we go. Tonight. I like it. One thing I gotta be super careful of is, even though this machine's a lot lighter and it's not gonna sink as easy as that one, uh, the ground is still very unstable here. And since I'm working on this kind of sheer ledge, uh, one thing that could happen is the pit could wanna pull me in. This whole thing could slough off and then I'm gonna be fighting my way to not get stuck on top of that machine. So I gotta kinda of toe this fine line of getting as close to the edge of the hole as I can without completely burying this machine or sliding off. So kind of a delicate balance. It's not just brute strength. Right now, like I said, it's all about strategy. It's all about figuring out how close we can get, how much material we can remove without endangering another machine or getting that one even more stuck. Guys, here's a fun fact for you. I listen to a lot of music. I have a very eclectic taste in music. Literally everything from Tech 9 to Tchaikovsky, Mambo Number no. 5 to the Moana soundtrack. It's all over the place. Also, what I do for work, I encounter a lot of loud noises on a daily basis between the trucks, the heavy equipment, the recoveries. It gets loud. loud! Sometimes a little silence is golden. Having a good set of noise canceling headphones is a big deal for me. So you guys already know we've been working with Cove Speaker here on the channel uh, and they have really nice Bluetooth audio products. These noise canceling headphones they came out with are no different. What I love about them is memory foam uh, pads right here. They're Bluetooth obviously, they have a built-in microphone so I can take phone calls, I can listen to music, I can record videos, I can talk to you guys. Uh, it also has a little auxiliary port here. I can plug my walkie talkie in. Were you calling from a walkie talkie? They work really well and they fold up, super compact. Best part of all, they are affordable right now. Guys, 70% off is what you guys are gonna get if you use the link in my description below, which makes this set of noise canceling headphones less than 80 bucks, which good luck finding that anywhere else for a good quality set of headphones. I use them every day, they work for me, and I encourage you guys, if you need a good set of headphones, click the link in my description below because they're probably gonna sell out pretty fast at 70% off, so enjoy. Well, from past experience, I think our best bet right now is to not get that machine stuck. We need to keep the Sani high and dry as possible. Um, we also need to come in and basically cut in a berm right here in front of the boom. Fill the place where we can get that machine down to to basically get a, a nice little ramp built out. The problem here is the tracks are locked up. This track's completely gone. You can see just a couple bumps of it. That one is completely buried and that mud gets in there and sets up hard and it just locks that up tight. So we're gonna have to sh get shovels. We're gonna have to basically dig all this mud out away, put it down, build our pad, basically a trench dug around the whole thing. And then Hunter is gonna get on the shovel and just shovel <laughs> his heart out. Shovels, yeah. Oh, okay, me and Hunter are gonna yeah. get on the shovels. We're waking our neighbors! That bucket's six feet wide. Like, that's insane. It's huge. It's twice as big as the machine we had stuck, stuck last time. All right, so one thing we've learned through all of our big recoveries is having something that helps you distribute your weight across the ground such as like a giant swamp mat or a big timber pad like what we have here is literally the difference between getting unstuck and not ultimately these are what helped us get the uh giant excavator off the bed of the great salt lake which was a uh, probably a worse situation than this because access was horrible 
So we went over and grabbed uh, 16 of uh, these swamp mats. These ones are in pretty rough shape, which is great because we're gonna be really, really hard on them. Um, trying to pull a stuck machine with these is ultimately putting a lot of leverage, a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on them. We brought enough, I think, hopefully even extras. Um, whatever's left, whatever's good, we'll take back to the shop with us because it's actually really good hardwood that I reclaim and he actually used in the construction of my house. So kind of came in uh, full circle there. But uh, ultimately with these, we'll be able to First of all, get this machine close enough to dig around that other machine, get the track clear, and then we can lay these out kind of like a, just a little bit of a boardwalk right in front of that big machine. And as we start pulling, it should pull up on these. Wham, bam, up we go. So Now we stack the mats. So basically, uh, I'm gonna build what's gonna be the final ramp uh, for us to be able to try to pull the big you know, hoe up out of there. I'm also going to use this mat to be able to get down in there and keep digging around the tracks. We got that one track pretty well freed up, but it's also getting pretty juicy around it again. So as we move, every time we, we hit the ground, it pumps water to the surface. So we only have very limited moves left that we can make before uh, we end up in a situation where it gets swampy again. So trying to do as little big moves as possible, but a couple more of these swamp mats to move. All we do is big moves. All we do is win, right? Big money moves is what they call me in high school. That was my name, Big Money Moves. Well, you have the credit union? Just the credit union. <laughs> Down in here and be able to clear out both sides of the tracks of this machine. Uh, and then we're gonna pull the swamp mats probably back out and reposition them so that we actually have a better ramp for the big machine. If for some reason they don't want to come out, well then this is going to be the ramp. Um, so it's a little risky using them right now uh, and not having them exactly the way I want them. But realistically, I don't know where I need them yet, which is why I'm going to put them right here for now. That's going to get me the position I need with the sanding to be able to get next to the machine. And then we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's not do that. That's let's, not let's, not, let's not pump any water. No more, no more water pumping. We got one half of one track freed up. Somewhere under the belly of the beast was a whole pond of water and it started to just pour out from the inside from the tracks. And uh, yeah, so we got a lot of liquid in there. But hopefully we're not just sitting on more water. The more we dig, the more water's gonna come up. That'll be bad. But we did get that track to move a little bit, which is a good feeling. Um, so yeah, we'll keep picking away at it. Hopefully once we get that other track dug out and get a winch hooked to this, we can start to get it to chug yeah, backwards. Start to what? Start to chug backwards. Uh, I like that little dance you're doing there.
on the push off. Push on the push off. You're cool. Um, Would it be nice? What's that? There's a railroad tie on the telephone under this side. Yeah. But I still think it's going to be. Push it down. I think we're going to move to the other side now. This side's a lot wetter than that. Dig that side out. But back here would hold us. But that back much. we gotta get I wanna, we gotta, I wanna see if it'll if it'll let me pivot right here. Get up right there and get enough to get underneath these tracks. Dozer. We're gonna try dozer first. Just try it. Yep. Do we want it? Well, no, it? no. Let's do this. Let's get both vehicles like right here. Let's just, just we'll just double dozer. line it. Yeah. Not we'll even mess around blocks. with it. We'll snatch blocks. So technically, it's four cables running to it. I was thinking, hook these down to the bottom. Yep. Put the snatch blocks on the end of these. Yeah. Run both those winches straight to the snatch blocks back to these machines. Love it. I'm heading back to Salt Lake. <laughs> okay, let me uh, On the give you an update where we're at here. You got a, a um, block back, aren't you? That, all, that whole process went a little bit faster than we anticipated, being able to get the tracks cleaned out and get the ramp built in front of it. So we've got our swamp mats. We've got basically two and a half layers of, of mats there. We've got some that are running horizontal like this, or vertical, and then others that are running horizontal across top of them. That provides us um, a little extra, you know, strength. Huh? Oh man, I'm blaming Hunter. Um, so that gives us a little bit of extra strength because obviously this machine is super heavy and even when it does come out, you're going to watch it probably just chew those swamp mats to pieces. Good news is the tracks are so close to moving. They just, they want to go. We got them pretty cleared out. The back end is still really full of dirt and mud and we can't really get back there with the, this, any other machine because it's really swampy on that far side. Um, luckily the ground has had a chance to dry out since the last storm a little bit. So that's been really nice. Um, we, we almost got, this is the part where we can screw up the whole recovery because we get impatient. And just, you know who you're talking to? I'm talking to the juice box guy. Start pushing things and then we start, you know, we're not going to do that. What we're going to do, we're going to get the dozer and we're going to get our five ton. We're going to rig them up right here. We're going to run the winch lines to this point on the track hoe. Then we're going to run our snatch blocks um, on the middle. So it's basically doubling the winch power of each vehicle. So the five ton and the dozer will both have extra winching power. Um, twice the winching power of what a normal one straight line would do and the reason we're doing that is because we may only have one shot at pulling this thing out and we need all the pulling power we can get once we get the machine up on this mat here we're in good shape
the tail light there. Oh, that was like it when we bought it. Yeah. Uh, was... Are they backed up into the woods? No, that was that was like it when we bought it, man. Man, nothing, nothing hey, happened. Seen some fresh shears on these screws here. Those well, screws? Nope. 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 Uh, the plan right now is I'm going to jump in the big hole that's stuck. We'll have Brian here in his dozer running his winch. We're going to have Jack and Jim running the winch on the five ton. And uh, we're going to clear the area because one of these cables breaks and it's a bad time for everybody. So that's the biggest risk that we run right now is breaking cables because that sucks. But this whole place sucks. A lot of dead weight the tracks are this close to spinning the problem that we're having now is the five ton that we're anchoring uh the front of it to the track hoe i think it's jim ted just pulled the front bumper off of the five ton so that means it's a lot of freaking weight so we gotta figure out a better anchor system right but then the, it would be pulling off the tractor so we can go to the truck
not even tomorrow yet. I don't know. This? What's it? It's not even dinner time. Man, it's static. That thing's buried. Mm. Let's look at that hole real quick. Because <laughs> that's... Whew. You want some swamp mats? Because they're yours. Oh, oh thank goodness. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> I'd pull oh, them out. Oh, boat dock. I might need to hang on to them. Float <laughs> those things. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys are freaking awesome. Oh, this is that amazing. Cool. I can't believe you answered my call. Yeah, man. It worked out amazing. great. Thank you. I'm glad you called. This is like the stuff we dream about. I don't know if you even saw this. Did you see this bumper? When did that happen? The same time I asked you about that tail light. Oh, no wait. Oh, this bump. Yeah, no, no, no. This was like this when we bought it. Yeah, this wasn't. This wasn't us. I was. Sun was hitting. It. We were in the sh shadows and stuff. But you know, that's how they come factory that way. Oh, so okay. With that, that bumper, factory tail light, factory. It's weird they come cracked, but I. I don't know how the military did things back in the day, but a little backwards than I do it now. But yeah, it's not factory. It's the whole thing. Rust, factory rust. 